Okay. Hello, folks. Uh, it's been a while since I did a Lego review set. So, Lego set review, I should say. Um, this one I actually finished quite a while ago, but uh, just didn't get off my butt to make a video about it. And here's my dog, by the way. Cameo by my dog. That's Lady. Um, she'll probably be the most exciting thing about the video. <laughs> take, your, take in your fill there. Uh, anyway, <laughs> here is the set I want to talk about. It is, well, this is the box for the set. Anyways, let's take a look at the box. It's Rivendell. Lego Rivendell. This is set 10316, 6,167 pieces. It did take me a while to build, not as long as it has been out, uh, <laughs> certainly, but it did take me a while. There's a lot of little finagly things, uh, fiddly bits to this one. And I'll flip the box over so you can see the top because here they have an image of all the minifigures that it comes with. It's really quite a few. A lot of like elves. Um, I think the entire fellowship. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's everybody. The whole Fellowship of the Ring, plus Bilbo, um, Elrond, there, there's all the Hobbits, um, uh, Glowin, which is Gimli's dad, um, and then some, like, random elves who I guess are just hanging out in, um, in Rivendell. Uh, so let's have a look at the actual set. Here it is. It's pretty cool. Uh, just ignore all the junk in the background in my, in this room. Uh, this is the, the playroom here at my house. Um, yeah, it's got three different uh, big, thick manuals here. And you'll see on the picture on the front, they have the section that you're going to be building with that manual, like sort of bolded, uh, so you can tell what it is you're going to be making. Um, there we go. So this, and those each count actually are separate uh, parts of the, of the thing. Um, let me pull this a little bit closer, hopefully without breaking anything. That would be cool. Um, yeah, so you can see this this section pops right out, and it's got these little connectors, so you can push it together again. Uh, and this section is pretty neat. We've got a little sort of gazebo um, with a little day bed, I guess, inside uh, for elves to hang out and be elvish. <laughs> And here are some of the minifigures. I've got them set up, like, walking around the place. Let's see if we can get a good shot of this guy. There he is. He is a uh, random elf number one. They've got the long braided hair piece there, and the they've got the pointed ears attached to their hair pieces. Um, pretty cool, like, armor shirt there. Um, and you can see there's a waterfall and this little bridge over the water, which I think is pretty neat. Um little trees a lot of trees in this one a lot of tree building which means a lot of leaves uh, and it's cool that they have all these different colored leaves because it gives you a lot of variety in the look of the thing um, building the roof for this gazebo was was, was interesting because there's a lot it's it's just a lot of little pieces really a lot of this this set is very like I don't know how to describe it like fiddly like um it's not it's not like a you just snap it into place and there you go. It's like you can everything can be moved a little bit, you know? You got to angle it until it looks right. Uh which is tricky. It's a tricky build. Um Oh, and you'll see in the background here. So this this set uh was pretty expensive and uh when I bought it, I qualified for these guys. Um I'm not really a huge fan of of these of these things. Um where is my box for that? Let me get the box so I can show you. They're called brick heads. Um, it's I guess it's kind of a fun concept. <laughs> they just have these. I guess they were kind of go, trying to go with like sort of the the pop pop figure. They're like pop culture icons that they've made into these uh, Lego creatures with big heads. So this one is appropriately enough. Frodo and Gollum, uh, set four zero. 630, 184 pieces. Um, so I wouldn't have sought this set out myself. 
um, to have because I don't really care about the Brickheads things, but it's kind of cool to have, especially since it came as a free extra. And you can see that Frodo has the ring there and Sting. And then here's Gollum. And Gollum has a fish, his favorite. <laughs> so these were easy to build, uh, kind of fun, kind of gross in a way. <laughs> His, his creepy little, like, almost hairless head. <laughs> These little lines to indicate the little, uh, his sparse hair. And you'll notice there's a lot of extra pieces floating around here. Um, just, you know, there's always extras uh, laying around when you're done, especially a big set like this. But this one especially has some alternate ways of handling things. So let me show you some of these minifigures here. So... Well, let's, let's move our way. Let's work our way over there. So right over here, you'll see another, another sort of outbuilding um, with this roof. And inside is a table, and on the table is some Lembas. So I'm actually going to... I think what I'm going to do is take my phone out of this light ring so I can get a little bit more mobility. Um, so let me show you. We can get inside here and see the Lembis on the table. Those were kind of cute. Uh, and here's one of our favorite hobbits, uh, Pippin and or Merry. I'll be honest, I always get them mixed up. I believe this is Pippin, Pippin with the lighter hair. And he has a carrot, of course. And here is Merry, and he has a piece of Lembis. Ooh, and I've ripped off part of the floor. <laughs> and let me see if I can get him to come into focus. That would be nice. Right? How about some focus? There we go. Hello. Let's, uh, let's put the floor back where it's supposed to be. That would be good, too. There we go. Um... So yeah, the the hobbits are pretty neat looking. They've got the their neat their little cloaks and uh, nice patterns, and they have what they have are the the, the short non-posable legs. Um, and you'll see over here, this is the meeting of the council where they discuss the ring, and I've seated some folks around the table here who were at that meeting. Um, here's Gandalf. So this is one of the things I wanted to show you about the minifigures is you'll see he's in a seated position and what they've done is they've given you the option to either have him be in that seated position so he can sit in the chair or have him be standing. So you can see what they've done here is they've given you some Lego pieces to attach to his torso to make it look like he's, he's actually sitting. But you can pop those off and you can have this, here's the alternate version of his of his bottom piece and you of course he this this kind of piece with the 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 idea is that he's wearing a robe so it's not it's not bendable it's not flexible so he can't actually sit down so they've they've given you this option so you can have him be sitting down and he's got of course his hat and his staff and his beard um and who else do we have here's elrond and he also i have him in his seated position but again there is another piece uh, that you can use instead so he can be in his normal standing position. He's got sort of a quirked eyebrow look here on his face. Um, and here we have Gimli, Glowin's son, with his axe, uh, ready to strike the ring and destroy it, which of course does not work. Uh, he's got a very lovely braided beard here and a, a nice... Uh, symbol on his belt buckle that's pretty cool looking um, he doesn't need any special pieces to sit because he has he has flexible uh jointed legs so you can just sit him like a normal guy but the hobbits do because like as i was saying their their legs are very short and non-posable so it may look like these are just posable legs but they are not they're actually a couple of lego pieces they just stick onto his torso to make it look like he's sitting and you can, again, pop those off and put regular leg legs on if you want. And here's Bilbo, the previous ring bearer, also with the Lego pieces for, for sitting. 
uh, and he's got his little staff for walking because uh, he's quite old by the time of this story. And here is uh, Gimli's father, Glowin. Uh, if you're not super familiar with the storyline, um, Glowin here was one of the hobbits who went, or one of the, I'm sorry, one of the dwarves who went with Bilbo on his adventure. Um, and he came also to the, uh, to the Council of the Ring. Um, but although he didn't actually go with Frodo on his adventure, it was uh, his son Glowin who went with him. Um, and then we also have, here we go, Baramir. He looks good. Again, he has a cloak and he has flexible, I mean, bendable legs, posable legs. So he doesn't need any special pieces. Um, oh, and also, here's Gimli's helmet. Uh, if you don't want to see his long, luscious locks. <laughs> You can put this helmet on his head instead. It's pretty cool. I love the designs on it. Um, and then we have Legolas the Elf. Legolas Greenleaf of Mirkwood. And here is Aragorn, son of Arathorn. Rather plainly dressed for the council. Um, and then let's get in here and get a better look at this. So these are some pretty neat. We got this throne here for Elrond to sit on. It is his house. And there's the one ring. I mean, funnily enough, it's not just one. Because <laughs> they always give you extra of little pieces uh, in Lego sets like this. So there's actually a number of... I think it comes with three or four different uh, copies of the one ring. <laughs> uh, but there it is on the pedestal. You can see that this uh, flooring is really cool with this pattern that you've... You build into it. Luckily, that's not very difficult to do. Those, those pieces just have those. They're just painted that way. Um, so you just set them in. Um, and the throne is right under this, the biggest tree in the build. This very large tree over here that comes up as all these different colored leaves. There's another big tree back here. And I, as I was saying, I really like the variety in the tree builds. Um, they're each really their own thing uh, with their own way of with their own branches and their own way of being built and, and their own colored leaves and stuff. So that's really cool. Um, let's see. What else can I show you? So here's another one of the elf minifigures. She has a little book that she's reading. We can take a look at the inside of this book. What is she reading about? Uh, it's just scribbles, of course, but it looks like something about a tree. Typical for elves. Elves like trees. Uh, another fun thing is there's a little hiding place over here. So you can, as in the movie, um, Sam was hiding nearby uh, to listen to the, to the council because he had not been officially invited. So you can put him in this little hole with these leaves sit in front of it and they can flip up. Uh, and here he is. Here's Sam with his frying pan. Um... And over here, there's a series of statues, which of course are really just minifigures that you put on these pedestals. Um, but they're all gray minifigures, so they look like statues. They look like stone statues. Um, let's spin it around. Well, instead of spinning around I, <laughs> the model around, I will spin around so we can see the other side. I have to shove some things out of my way. Of course, <laughs> the Lego builder's friend here, the brick separator. And uh, uh, among all the extra little pieces, there are, of course, lots of weapons. Um, some of them very famous. So this is the sword of Isildur. Well, actually, it's the sword of his father, um, Elendil. Uh, did I do that right or did I do that wrong? No, I did that right. Uh, that was broken, that cut uh, the ring from Sauron's finger in the last alliance of elves and men, uh, and that is then reforged into Anduril for Aragorn before they set off on their quest. Um, so that's pretty cool that you get one of those. Um, there's also another sword here, a number of different kinds of weapons, uh, an axe here. But what I wanted to show you was the inside here. Um, and you'll see you actually get multiple copies of the sword that was broken here. This is uh, this is the statue that I think you see in the movie. 
uh, the holding the sword um, that was broken and that is then uh, later reforged. So let's get a little closer look at some of this stuff. So there's some paintings hanging on the wall here. Um, I'm not really 100% sure what this is meant to be. It might be Minas Tirith. It might be Gondolin of old. I'm not sure. Um, we've got a ship over here. Of course, the elves are always talking about ships and going west across the ocean. Uh, this is a cool little design here. And there's these nice bird, like stone birds on the ends of the, of the, the building here. Uh, these nice towers. A lot of little details, little, little fiddly bits that you have to put together. Um, down inside of here. Let's see what else we have. You'll see all these like fluted columns and all these little intricate details. Um, here's a here's a big central painting. This is of course illustrating uh, the fall of Elendil, and then which is quickly followed by Isildur taking up that broken sword and cutting the ring from Sauron's finger. Um, down in here. Uh, we can see back here there's a little bookcase and a little table and well, that's sort of a bed like the bed that we saw in that other area. Uh, nice little candles on the wall, more candles, and here we also see these little pedestals or study platforms with like books and stuff on them. Um, this one is, let's pop this out so you can get a better look at it. And it's not on there really, really good. It's just one, um, one stud holding on. So there's like an inkwell here and a little map. Um, so that's pretty neat. Uh, let's put that back in there. I believe, do I have, I think there was meant to be a pen in that inkwell. Oh no, here we go. Here's a, here's one with a pen. And again, this is a little map of Middle Earth. You can see the, the two towers there. Um, the dark tower and back in here we got a little staircase leading up and a what looks like a telescope uh, setting there and some more details back here cups and tables and candles um, let's see what's on this one just pop this guy out real quick uh, another map. It looks like an even uh, a sort of zoomed-in map of uh, of Mordor, probably. Um, looks like the the eye, the lidless eye, above the tower. So we'll just push that back in there. Uh, so yeah, lots of lots of areas here for uh, for play. Uh, there's a staircase there. A um, lot of fun details uh, that you. That will be familiar to folks who know the story in the movie, uh, and you'll see that this this is one of the other places where the model comes apart into pieces, which is cool. You can like pull this open and get in here. Uh, try to do this without without knocking anything over or breaking anything. Up here, there's a, a bedroom, uh, and it's got this little. Let's see if we can get in there. Uh, you can see there's a little head post, and back over here there's a bench and a chair. Uh, really nice little details. Um, fun stuff. Yeah, back in there you can see, let me get my light over here so you can see better, or I'm trying to figure out how to give you a better look at this. Uh, Oh, there we go. That's better. So back in there, you can see uh, a book and uh, inkwell, and the book can be opened up, and it says, there and back again. I don't know if you can quite make that out, but there it is, there and back again. So this is clearly meant to be, I believe, Bilbo's room at uh, at Rivendell. He was staying there um, at the time at this point in the story of Lord of the Rings when they had the council uh, so this is like his room here at Rivendell where he's living um, having his retirement as it were um, I love the little bookshelf down here it looks great 
uh, all the different like colors and shapes of the the book bindings that's that's fun um, I'll take another swing through here with the light on so you can get a better look at it you'll see that this pattern repeats across the whole floor very colorful uh, they have a lot of uh, bright colors in this build a lot of almost pastel type colors um, and we can get a look over here let me show you some more of this part so this sort of gazebo section um, does in fact come off uh, very easily it's just sitting on top of here uh, and you can get down inside here and I'll come back around uh, as you can see this is like an armory down here uh, where they've got various other kinds of weapons axes and bows and swords those are the the elvish style of sword there and then there's like a grinding wheel over here um, and a lamp on the wall so that's cool sort of hidden under there um, and there's some mushrooms back here and a frog you gotta love the little details and the love that they put into everything when they design these models and on this side you could see more mushrooms and leaves and these roots from the tree coming down. Another lantern and an anvil and a forge here with the glimmering fires back there. So that's really cool. Nice details. More mushrooms. So there you go. There's Rivendell. I will say it was a time-consuming time model. <laughs> Certain parts weren't particularly fun to do. Uh, I will say especially... <laughs> These roof tiles, they're like hundreds of these little tiles that you have to put on these pieces and align. And something I don't, I'm not sure I've seen before in an instruction manual is they actually give you a hint on how to, a tip on how to get these to align straight, where they say take another, you know, like long thin piece and run it in between here. So to try to align these to each other, because otherwise, if these aren't aligned, if they're even off a little bit, it looks pretty lousy. <laughs> so you got to do a lot of like, even once you've put all these pieces on here and all the colors and the correct configuration, you've got to run, run other pieces through them to straighten them out. So it doesn't look all wonky. Um, so the roof, <laughs> I got to say, when I got to the, the section in the manual where it was like, all right, now get out 132 of these or however many it was and start putting them down. I was like, I took a break for a while. <laughs> uh, I, I love building Legos, but that's a, that was a lot of work, a lot of, a lot of repetitive work too. And a lot of like very fine detail work, which is always the hardest thing to do, um, with Legos. Uh, but it is a really cool set. Once you've got it done, once you've gone through the, uh, the difficulties, um, it does take a lot of little, you'll see these, these chairs are, are, are a little fiddly. Like you have to, a lot of the bits of the build are a little fiddly and maybe, I mean, that's cool. You turn it and you make it look the way you want it to. But, uh, and the, the interesting thing about these chairs is that they're made of sausages. You'll see the armrests are, are like Lego sausage pieces, which I think is pretty funny. Um, but there you go. Uh, there it is. I've always been a huge fan of Lord of the Rings, so when I saw that this set was coming out, this big, massive Rivendell set with the ring and Bilbo and all the swords and Gandalf and everything, I was like, well, I gotta have that. So <laughs> here it is. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's fun. Uh, and <laughs> finding a place to put it is always interesting. Um, right now, you'll see... I just have it on a card table in uh, in the playroom, uh, which is like the messiest room in our house, which is saying something. Um, uh, but if you have a place where you can put it, like pride of place, up on a shelf, or if you have like a Lego room already built, uh, it's it's a great piece to have out because it it looks great. It's got so many fun things to look at and and to to uh, to play with. So. There you go, Lego Rivendell. Thanks for watching.